After the birth of agriculture, the Middle East enters a new stage. It is called the pre-pottery period. So at this time period, the hunters and gatherers of the Zagros Mountains are beginning to establish small settlements on the Fertile Crescent, also in Anatolia and on the Levant, the exact same thing is happening. So here we have this line that shows the general geographical sites of inhabitations. Over here we have Ganj Dare. It's probably one of the oldest settlements in the Zagros Mountains. It dates back to 8000 BC. These people were domesticating goats and they were cultivating barley. A little bit to the south we have another small settlement, Ali Kosh. This one dates back to 7500 BC. To get to Ali Kosh, we have to walk two kilometers in this direction through people's farms and then we get to a hill. And that hill was excavated back in the 1960s and they discovered evidence of sheep domestication and also they found rows of wheat and barley. And please pay attention that Mesopotamia at this point in history is virtually empty. At some times during the pre-pottery stage, so before 6500 BC, people begin moving towards Mesopotamia from all different directions, from the Zagros Mountains, from the north, from the south, and from the west. People are beginning to discover that the lands around these two rivers are highly fertile. Around 6500 BC, the very first cultures begin to appear in Mesopotamia. So the first one is Ubaid culture and its location is Lower Mesopotamia. And in this time period between 6500 BC and 4300 BC, other cultures also appear in Mesopotamia. For example, Samara culture or Halaf culture or Hasuna culture. These cultures have one thing in common, and that's extensive works of pottery. During the Ubaid period, there was an advancement in the construction of structures and houses. There is evidence that people were using units of measurements and mathematics to construct houses. So here I have an example of a multi-roomed house. It's called tripartite. And it was common in the Ubaid period and also in Egypt. This was not the case during the pre-pottery period. So in modern day Turkey, they have reconstructed houses which look like the houses of the pre-pottery period. And you can see that they kind of look like shelters. They are one compartment houses side by side. Now I'm going to show you a village in the central parts of Iran, this village is 8,000 years old and it gives us a general idea of how villages in those old times were constructed. Welcome to the Sialk Tepe, 8,200 years old. Before this site was discovered back in the 1900s, people thought that this was a haunted place. And they avoided coming here in the fear of devils. And that was a good thing, because they did not cause damage to the structure. This structure is a ziggurat. Ziggurats were foundations of temples. 
During the Ubaid period, people were building raised platforms to get closer to the skies and the heavens. At the end of the Ubaid period and the beginning of the Uruk period, these raised platforms were being turned into temples, which was a full religious site. Here we can see the houses built on top of each other. The lowest layer is layer 1 and it was built around 6000 BC. And the topest layer is layer 5 and it was built around 2000 BC. And speaking of haunted houses, people used to bury their dead in their own homes in this place. And this is a skeleton of a child that was discovered during excavations in one of the rooms of one of these houses. One of the distinctive features of the Ubaid period was that houses were being built with mud bricks. And they were tough. After six, seven thousand years, this structure is still standing. This is a millstone. A very primitive one. It was used to grind wheat. The wheat was turned into flour and then the flour was mixed with water to produce dough. The dough was thrown on a hot stone to produce bread. And these are some jars that stored grains. 